He's like, God does not condemn you for that. Does God condemn someone for being in a wheelchair? Does God condemn someone for having congenitive heart failure? Does he condemn them for them because they can't serve in certain ways? Absolutely not. You gave your all. You gave exactly what you had. And he is so pleased with you. And I was like, man, there's a special place in heaven for a person like that that says those kinds of things, right? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Saints Inscripted. We have a face here that might seem a little familiar. Um, you may recognize him from that video, That's right? The we'll link that below. <laughs> That's the one. Um, and you guys were just like, in the comments, we're like, get him back up here. You know, like, let's talk about more topics, which kind of worked out because you you were kind of saying at the end of the episode, like, there's a few things that I still was like more, yeah. hoping yeah, to, yeah, to talk about. So today we're going to go the direction of, of kind of a mission experience. Yep. Um, where we, uh, Kayla and I both served missions. Where, where did you, you served in Chile? Yeah. Chile. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, I served, served in Tijuana, Florida. Mexico. Nice. Where did you serve? I served in, we've come to find out two places. The first one was Columbia, South Carolina. And the second one was in St. George, Utah. Cool. So you you want to tell us? Yeah. You yeah. want to tell us a little bit about, yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, for sure. So I began my mission on May 12th, 2012. So just shy of 10 years ago. Um, I was called to serve Spanish speaking in Columbia, South Carolina. And that's really where the happy part start or stops. Okay. okay. <laughs> you got the call. I got the call. Was... Went to the MTC. Well, I guess we can say a bit more happy stuff about that. I was excited. I was super excited. I was the first person in my family to serve in like three or four generations well, or something. And, like that. and if you guys have watched the last video, this is pretty much after your conversion. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like after exactly. You like, find, yes. like you, you're exactly. excited to be a member. And exactly. Yeah. 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 So if you guys watched the watch last video, you know that. Like when I was 18, I was fully converted to that point and I was like, okay, I don't have all the answers, but I have enough answers. Let's go forward and see what this is about. It, I feel very strongly that I need to go on a mission. It seems like a good thing. I have knowledge about this, something I really truly believe in. Let's go forth and, and conquer, right? So I got my mission call and I prepared like as much, I mean, I took so many, so many institute classes. I read so many awesome, books on the yeah. thing. Like I tried to really, really take it seriously, right? I mentally prepared for it. I, you know, like I, like I mentioned in the last uh, video, I really struggled with anxiety and depression. So I tried to, I went to counseling. I did everything that I could to take care of it. And so when I got into the MTC at May 12th, 2012, and that was, I like, it was so weird. It was so shocking because like, I prepared for this. Like I knew it was coming. I talked to people to, to know to, what, 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 what to like, expect yeah. and so on and so forth. But at the time, I had no idea what happened because the minute I got dropped off, it was like all the training, all the preparing, all everything was out the window. And without getting into like really, 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 sure. really dark stuff, I had an anxiety attack every 10 minutes for 28 days straight. I lost 40 oh pounds in four weeks. Yeah. And no one could explain it. I didn't understand why. It's not like I was right. in war. No, no but was, you're was, just yeah, kind exactly. of falling apart. It just happened. Yeah. So I didn't know what was going on. It was so bad. Like I was like I was a lot like I'm fit, but I was way, way skinnier back then. Right. And so to lose 40 pounds in four weeks is like for anyone, it's bad for anyone. And and just to like help people in the audience understand like that, that isn't completely abnormal. Yeah. You know, just to be in the MTC and the stress, I had someone, two people in my NTPC group went home one because he just broke out full body rash. No explanation. He went to the doctor and they were just like, what's, but he was, he was, so they sent him home, you know, and another elder kind of a similar, not, not as bad as that. Right. Like, so this isn't completely abnormal. This is an extreme though. This is your experience. This this is an extreme. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't understand why, like, cause like I said, like I wasn't at war. I wasn't being tortured. I wasn't being waterboarded every (laughs) night. Like I I didn't know what was going on. Right. So it's like, it didn't make sense why I felt the way that I did. Um, obviously like I talked to my leaders in there, there was a really tragic experience where I don't, I can't remember what his name is, but it's like when you're having those type of problems, you go talk to this guy in the front part of the MTC. I can't remember what his title was, but I went and talked to him and he was vicious about it. He's like, you are being so immature about this. You're faking this. You just want to call your mom. You'd like, he was so mean about it. And That's I was like, how, like, how dare you? Yeah. Like, 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 You're are trying you your best kidding here. me? Yeah. yeah. Like all I'm asking for is some help right now. Like, I'm not saying I want to go home. I'm, I'm just struck. Like he was so you, mean about it. You wouldn't it, be right? going to him if you wanted to go home. Exactly. You would just yeah. go home. I would just go home. Yeah, I would exactly. walk out. I guess yeah. it didn't exist then, but yeah. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I would literally just walk just out, jump walk the fence, home. do whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So it was, it was really, really tough. I mean, obviously like I decided to stay 
And it got to the point where it was, it was so bad. Like I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't focus. I could barely even exist at that point. And it was still all in the name of like, why is like, I was so embarrassed. Cause it's like, this is a mission. This isn't war. This isn't like, why am I feeling this did, way? Right? Did you feel like, did you feel like it was because of the stimuli? Like the things were happening in the MDC that made you that stressed? Or is it question. kind of just like, you're just there. Cause I know I felt that like things just kind of change. You're just yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like. It's a major so, life change. Yeah. So, so I felt what I felt and what I eventually learned what was going on is, is two different things. N- yeah. In a way I kind of felt it like, Oh, it was a shock, but it's like, man, like I've lived on my own before. I've been through shocking things before. If you watched the last video, you know, I've been through shocking things before. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. I didn't understand. This is your first stressful yeah, experience. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, dude. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to live with my dad or to go yeah, on exactly. vacation. Are you kidding me? Like, like which I one would you choose? You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but it got so bad to the point where, you know, I went to the psychiatrist in the MTC and I went to the, the to the MDs in the MTC. They're like, you have to go home. Like you look like you're going to die. Is, yeah. Like this you, is, yeah. this is, this is, you're going to die if you stay here. Like you look like you're about to pass out and never come back. Right. And so I was like, I, okay, I guess like, I don't know what the heck is going on right now. Right? I can barely even function as a human being. And so I went home and that's when stuff got really bad and not because I was home. Like at the time, again, from the last video, like things were getting better with my parents and so on and so forth. And so none, I wasn't struggling with the things that I struggled with back then, but the cultural scorn was unbearable. Like, you know how they talk about like horses are really vicious if they kick you out of the herd. And they are so mean to each other. Same with wolves. Yeah. I'd prefer that over what I went oh, through. Like right. it was, I mean. And you're from a small town. So like, probably, probably made it a little worse. Way worse. Everyone is so closed minded there and, and everything. Ugh. And I think we've done some episodes that you guys can look up about your mission, like mission experiences. We've interviewed some people come home from their missions and you, you'll get that theme where like within the culture of the church, not the doctrine. Yes. Culture, right. Like culture. No, nowhere is, is Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. saying, well, if you didn't serve, you suck. Yep. But that comes through with the people, you know, whether it's people in your ward or family members, people will be like, you didn't serve then. And there's varying levels. Sounds like you got the worst mm-hmm. again. Uh, you know? And then there's <laughs> also that general <laughs> misunderstanding. We're getting a little better, but just of mental health in general. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of people have not really understood that. Yep. And especially in the context of a mission. A hundred percent. Yeah. If there's, if there's one place that you can go, at least in Utah, where people do not understand mental health, it is in small towns. Like, it, like right. even far. now, it's, it yeah. blows my mind with like the the progress. Because like when you go to college, mm-hmm. like it's you're a lot of people from a lot of different places. It becomes a lot more normal to talk about this, you know. Yeah. And like, there's a lot of progress there. But then you go back to visit other places, like, and you forget. Like, it's like I went back thirty years, oh, you know. <laughs> like their <laughs> understanding of like modern medicine. I don't know, but it's, it's just terrible. Yeah. So for those who don't know the. The primary thought of why someone comes home from their mission is because of unworthiness, right? That's the Mm -hmm. the initial kind of like, oh, something happened, right? And so, honestly, I would have been fine. I would have been, I would have been ecstatic if that's what people thought. That would have been like great because then they'd be like, okay, you messed up, you can fix it or whatever, right? Right. And I would have done that. No, 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 no. Once they actually found out the reason why I come home, oh my gosh, because. You're coming from an, a, 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 a community of farmers and hunters and these gritty, like, you they just mess so through it. Hard. Exactly, yeah, exactly, right? And they do, like, they just don't understand or they're in complete denial of mental health and how that works. That even you just yeah, wake exactly. up you just and go to through. work and then you sleep. Like, that's, yeah. Exactly. And so, I mean... It, it was even to the point, and this is so unfortunate to say, because this is not to talk down on any temple experience, but the workers in the temple were from the community and Manta Yuta was the, is the, yeah. is the temple mm-hmm. that I went to. That is probably where I heard the worst of it. That is where I heard the worst of it, of, of just the scorn and the disgust and the, you came home for that? What? How do you justify that? How do you, you know what I mean? This is in the temple. It's like, are you? what like this it was just so yeah. it was so 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 much and it is to the point i mean i mean the 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 younger generation is obviously better so it's not better dating was virtually non-existent at that point friends were virtually non-existent at that point it was like it was like i was it was like i was a leper like like honestly i feel like being a leper would be nicer because at least the relief society would bring you dinner at that point you know what I mean? was, <laughs> and, and so it was it was really really rough and i know i'm not doing a proper job to actually explain like the mental pain that i went you through can't, yeah exactly. yeah you can't exactly so what at what point like, did you ever see a change or did you just have to remove yourself from 
It's a good question. Situation. It's a good question. So after I got home, um, it got obviously a lot worse, which definitely added on to it. And it did not get better for a really, really long time. And like years, years. Yeah. yeah. It took mm-hmm. years to get better. And, um, I obviously continue to go counseling. So that helped out a lot. But the thing that honestly let, like, like held me true this entire time, cause it's like, honestly, I would not be a part of any organization ever if it treated me like this. I don't care if we're talking about cheerleading. I don't That's care. Normal. If we're talking, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I don't like, care. When, when somebody's dating someone toxic, you just say, well, break up. Yeah, leave, break up. You know, Ex- get out exactly. Of it, right? Like I would so never, you would think it would be the same with the church. Exactly. Exactly. If I was but, a part of any other situation or any other organization and any of the members treating me like this, like, why would I stay? Right. Mm-hmm. But it was my testimony of the church that kept me here. It's like, I know know what I have felt. I know what I've been through. I know my experiences I've been through. It's like, I can't leave. Like logically I can't leave. And then spiritually I can't leave either. I know what's going on here. Right. So I had to push through, which was painful to know that. Right. Cause it's it kind of sucks when you realize the thing that's causing your pain and you can't stop it. Right. You have yeah. to kind of just barrel through it at the time. Right. Um, so one of the biggest like moments and this is this is something that was told to me i've told to this to other missionaries that have come home early this is like the big the big thing that was told to me that like actually like brought any form of peace to me at the time and it was from my old seminary teacher who was just amazing and he just understood how to help people that were struggling mentally and i was explaining to him what happened we just met up one day and i explained to him what happened and i'm gonna cry let's be real i'm gonna cry because this is such a tender experience and such tender moment we never cry, so it's okay. <laughs> we literally removed our tear ducts <laughs> for the <this> series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was talking with him, and I explained to him what happened, and he's like, "Wyatt, I want you to think about the two thousand stripling warriors inside of the Book of Mormon. There was a time when they went to war, when they went to a battle, and there were some that fainted because of the loss of blood, but there was others that kept fighting. The ones that fainted, are they any less worthy?" Are they any less important? Are they any less favorable in the sight of God just because they fainted versus the ones that could keep fighting? You are one of those that fainted. And I was like, <sighs> like, that was so beautiful to hear. You know what I mean? He's like, God does not condemn you for that. Does God condemn someone for being in a wheelchair? Does God condemn someone for having congenitive heart failure? Does he condemn them for them because they can't serve in certain ways? Absolutely not. You gave your all. You gave exactly what you had and he is so pleased with you and i was like man there's a special place in heaven for a person like that that says those kinds of things right so from there it kind of like opened my mind it was like because up to the point it was just like i have to go back on a mission i have to face this i have to go back and feel all this pain tenfold and deal with all the cultural scorn and the embarrassment and everything that i felt before i felt good going into the mtc beforehand now i have to go back feeling absolutely terrible you know like what's what's the what's the probability that i'm actually going to have success this time right Mm -hmm. and that is when i had the question comes to me, it's like, do I actually have to go back? Is that something that God actually wants me to do? Is there a possibility where I am actually not supposed to go back? According to everyone that was in Santa Fe County, Utah, absolutely you had to go back. There's no (laughs) other option. You cannot argue with that or else you were a useless human being and you can only live a shadow of a life. And so that's when I went back to my seminary teacher and I was like, I know we as young men have been commanded to go, but are we as young men commanded to go back if we came back for medical purposes? Yeah. And he's like, no, you tried. There is a possibility that God wants you to go back. I'm not going to lie to you. There is, there is possibility that he wants you to go back, but no, that's, that is a very personal thing that you need to figure out. And that took months. So sometimes that's right. harder when yeah. they're like, you're yeah. going to figure it out on your own. Yeah, it's like, exactly. just tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, no. So I obviously prayed about it a lot, went to the temple about it a lot, so on and so forth. And it wasn't until I was, it was like six months after the fact, six months after I came home mm-hmm. that I was it, not in the temple. I was outside of the temple. I was in the temple or, or outside of the temple on the grounds. And I just prayed and I was like, I've done everything. I, I don't know what else to do. Like, I really don't know what else to do. Am I supposed to stay home? And that is when I had like my book of Mormon experience, just this revelatory experience of just like, I just felt that heavenly father was so proud of me. And I could see inside of my mind of what it was like for a father to see a child struggling so hard to do something. They, they want to make their father so happy, their parents so happy. They try so hard to do it, but for whatever reason they can't. Right. And how proud you would be of your child for being like that. And that's how he felt about me. And I ultimately felt like, no, you've done what you need to. I actually need you here for something else. And it wasn't until six months after that, that I figured out 
why I need to come home and that six months later, I started serving his service mission in the St. George, Utah area. And the miracles and the experiences that I had and the effect that I had on the people there was life changing. And none of that would have happened if I didn't go through what I went through and wasn't commanded essentially to stay home on, um, um, and serve a service mission and how beautiful that was. And just like what people say about their mission and their experiences with their missions, I felt like I had it tenfold. Yeah. I mean, you home. probably, you know, so, you know, I mean, you know, some, some people fulfilling. go on their missions just to walk for two years. Exactly. And don't, yeah. don't even like, cause people won't even like let you like, Hey, can I mow your lawn? No weirdo. Get out of here. You know? So like a service mission, you actually like help people. Exactly. There, so. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So to wrap this up with a nice little bow, it wasn't until years later where I ha- where I was able to concoct a theory as to why I came home because at the time, like for years, I was just like, it doesn't make sense. I'm so embarrassed and so on and so forth. It wasn't until years later that I realized that not only did I have to come home to be served the people that I did, but playing off the other video, there was stuff going on inside of my family that would have proven to be very dangerous and proven to be very fatal if I wasn't home. And it has to do, obviously, probably as you can guess with my parents. And if I wouldn't have been home, a lot of people could have been in danger. And it was a beautiful moment when I realized that Heavenly Father brought me home because he knew that if I was to come home, I would have stayed faithful and that I would still do everything that I could and at the end still protect the people that I love the most, right? And what a, trying to say this as humbly as possible, but what a compliment that he knew he trusted you. that I would have went through all yeah. that scorn, all that pain and knew that I was going to come out the end still protecting those that I loved. Right. Well, and, and right. To, the, the, you don't find out these things until the end, like you're, especially when family things, you don't, probably don't have those conversations until years later. Yeah. You know? And exactly. so to find out what was going on. Exactly. And so. it's interesting how in those moments you feel like you're at your weakest, you know, you feel like you're the failure and, and heavenly father's over here saying, no, like I completely trust you right now. Yeah. Exactly. Like I see what's happening. Exactly. Now, here we are years later. Now, since then, I figured out a lot more reasons why I needed to come home. There's so many. And God usually does something for many, 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 many reasons. Right. And we don't have time to go into all of that. However, I do just want to finish really quickly. I don't want anyone to feel like they should not go on a mission. I understand that there that the mission experience is not perfect. I understand that there are procedural things that can change that will enhance the mission experience. And they certainly have over the last 10 years. Mental health is definitely more at the forefront mm-hmm. of the mission experience. Thankfully. Yeah, you know, they've done a lot. Yeah. yeah. But I want everyone to know that I am so happy that I went. Like, even though I there was an immense amount of sacrifice that went into it and an immense amount of pain that I went through, at the end, here I am 10 years later. And it's like, I am so grateful that I went, that I was able to help the people that I did, that I was able to have the experiences that I did. Because without it, I'm not saying I would have had a bad life, but like the, the, the experiences that have formed me since then, I wouldn't trade for anything. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's perfect. Definitely yeah, does. exactly. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, if anyone else in the comments has any experiences about like serving missions, or maybe if you came home early or whatever that was, share with us. Um, we have loved hearing from Wyatt yeah. and, and his experiences today. So. Thank you. We'll wrap it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's very good at tying it all together. I mean, we're just we like... don't have to do much. <laughs> we're just yeah, it's good. No, but thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.